There is nothing in this world I love more than post-apocalyptic video games. I mean it. There is nothing better than exploring these irradiated, dangerous hellscapes from the comfort of my own home. When it comes to games of this genre, you have a lot of variety to choose from. You can go with the classics like Fallout or Wasteland, or the more modern titles like Days Gone or The Last of Us. Crammed right in the middle of these titles is a little series called Metro. I had played the first game, simply titled Metro 2033, over 10 years ago, and while I remember enjoying the game, I didn't really remember anything about it. There's no way it still holds up 14 years later, I said to myself. Then I played it. Metro 2033 was released on March 16th, 2010 for Xbox 360 and PC. The game was actually based on a series of novels by the same name by Russian author Dmitry Gl Dmitry Gl fuck. Dmitry Glukhovsky. Now I'm a disgusting freak of nature known as a gamer, so I haven't read a book since the Guinness Book of World Records Gamers Edition 2008. But in preparation for this video, I actually picked up a copy of the first book. The game is a pretty accurate retelling of the first book, and I'd recommend giving it a read if that's something you're into. Enough about some boring old ass book though. How is the game? Metro at its core is a fairly linear survival horror first person shooter. You play as Artem, average Russian man and confirmed sex haver. Right off the bat, the game starts us off in the action. We don't know what's going on or where we are, but we're just told to follow this man. This acts as the game's tutorial area, but it does it without being too overbearing or handholding. The first aspect that really stands out in Metro is the HUD, or the lack thereof. A video game's heads-up display is sort of an unspoken thing that can really make or break the experience. They can often add to the experience by making the game feel more immersive, or be made to capture the attention of even the most brain-rotted TikTok zoomer out there. Metro goes with the former by having a very, very minimal HUD. All information is now on a need-to-know basis, as to not hoard up your screen with a bunch of useless information. Why would I need to know how much ammo or health I have when I'm just exploring? How am I going to know if I'm doing damage to enemies if I don't see a bunch of f***ing numbers flying off of them every time I look into their direction? Metro's HUD makes you feel immersed and downright terrified at the same time. The HUD is even flat out removed on higher difficulties. As you and your companion explore on, you eventually reach the surface getting your first look at the above ground world. Due to the toxic gases that pollute the surface, Artem needs to wear a gas mask anytime he's above ground. The gas mask uses filters that must be swapped every couple of minutes, or bad <gasps> stuff happens. This is just another resource you have to keep up on, and though I never ran out of filters on my playthrough, I had a few close calls and never had a comfortable stockpile to fall back on. This trip above ground is also our introduction to combat. We're ambushed by watchers, large canine-like creatures that often hunt in packs. Metro plays like your standard 7th generation first person shooter. Think COD or Battlefield, but a lot more depressing. We're told our objective is to meet with a group of other men at this large tower. We meet up with these men who are seemingly soldiers, but not long after a huge pack of watchers arrive. We try to get some sick clips for our MLG montage until we're finally overran. Then boom, 8 days later. The game's intro can really make or break the experience for players, but Metro starts off super solid. After this, we wake up in the nicest Russian apartment. This is Exhibition, home of Artem and his adopted father Alex. One of my favorite parts of the whole entire game is exploring the friendly Metro stations. A lot of work went into these, and it's interesting to see the different ways humanity is adapted to living underground. I highly recommend to take some time and look around these areas whenever you can. We meet up with Alex and head to the station's hospital. A whole battalion is wiped out by a new mysterious mutant species, the Dark Ones. Shortly after, the Ranger Hunter arrives. Rangers are a militaristic faction comprising of the most battle-hardened warriors a Metro has to offer. This Hunter guy is a certified Giga Chad. This comes in handy because not long after he arrives, the station is attacked. We fight off the attackers, which mainly consists of hiding in the corner since no one gave me a rifle, and we're given a very important task. Hunter is going off to fight these Dark Ones, 
but before he leaves, he gives us his ranger token. If Hunter doesn't return in a few days, we're to travel to Polis Station and present this token to a man named Miller. Lo and behold, Hunter never returns, and thus, our journey is kickstarted. The story of Metro isn't incredible, but it more than does an adequate job at getting you from point A to point B. Throughout your travels, you'll meet companions like Bourbon and Khan, deadly cult-like factions, and dangerous irradiated creatures. Artem is a silent protagonist, but throughout the game you can find and read his journal entries. These entries are some of my favorite part of the game. There is never a lot of attention brought to these, and the player could easily miss them, but these offer some fascinating insight into the character of Artem. Be sure to keep a lookout for these, and read as many as you can. For being the first game in the series, the game serves as a good introduction to the world and the lore surrounding it. So the story is a pretty decent entry in the Metro universe. How does the gameplay fare? Gameplay is what elevates Metro to a god tier game. You'd be hard pressed to find a more immersive experience than this right here. Like I mentioned earlier, the lack of a HUD makes the game so much more stressful and realistic. If you need to check your next objective, grab your journal and physically check. Want to know how much time your gas mask filter has left? Check your watch. As a brain dead Bethesda fanboy, not having a big fat quest marker to follow is a big adjustment at first, but you'll get used to it fast. The game is a shooter, and I'm happy to say that shooting feels so good. Gunfights are fast and brutal. You're always on the verge of dying or running out of ammo, whichever is worse. On the topic of guns, Metro has a pretty healthy variety of weapons and attachments. There are AKs, shotguns, revolvers, but none of these matter because Metro has the best gun I've ever used in all of gaming. This is the Tahar, and it might be my favorite gun of all time. It's a makeshift air rifle that shoots metal ball bearings, and you have to manually pump it up every time you use it. This motherfucker is nasty and slightly overpowered, but it's so much fun to use. Metro is a linear experience. In a world full of 300 hour long Ubisoft open world games, the linearity of this game was a godsend to me. Metro is an extremely tight experience. It doesn't feel like a single moment is wasted. From the very moment the game starts, you are immediately immersed in Metro's atmosphere. It's cold, desolate. It feels like there's no hope left in the world at all. In the rare moments where you have a brief window to sit and relax, you truly take comfort. Metro just isn't a non-stop shooting gallery. You'll sometimes go what feels like an eternity without firing a shot. This might sound boring to all my fellow Fortnite fans out there, but it works so well with building the tension. I struggle with calling Metro a horror game. It's more of a thriller game. There aren't any jump scares or anything, but it's just really stressful. In a fun, gamer way though. The visuals still hold up incredibly well. Now I am playing the 2014 Redux re-release, but even the OG game holds up incredibly well. The lighting is next level. The dark subway tunnels juxtaposed with the blinding light of the surface is awesome, even if my retinas don't appreciate it. I don't think you'll find a better looking and more atmospheric game from that generation. Now I just spent this whole video gushing over how much I love this game, but it isn't perfect. Okay, actually it is, but there's one really annoying issue with the game. The game doesn't run that great, at least on PC. I naively bought the Redux version on Steam, assuming it was the definitive way to play the game, but I was faced with crashes every hour or so. I had to replay multiple missions in full due to these crashes. There's apparently a way to fix this by going into the game files and messing around in there, but folders give me anxiety so I couldn't test it to confirm. Console players should be fine, and for my PC players out there, I still recommend giving the game a go. If you guys aren't fully convinced to give Metro a shot yet, then you should probably go back to League, I guess, I don't know. Even 14 years later, this game still holds up incredibly well. If you're a fan of Fallout, Stalker, or any of those garbage survival games on Steam, you need to give this game a try. Even almost a decade and a half later, Metro is still a masterpiece. Mm -hmm.